Can you mix sealed and ported subs in the same system and get good bass? That's a question I get asked quite often and it's the topic of discussion of today's video. Hey guys, I'm Gene Delasalo with Audioholics. And before we begin, before I give you that answer, I got to give a shout out to Joe at Joe Intel. He convinced me to take my Focusrite audio mixer from my Roland drum kit and interface it with my PC to improve the fidelity of these videos when I do them at my desk. Check out Joe Intel. He's got a great YouTube channel. He covers home theater equipment, awesome production quality on his videos. Thank you, my friend Joe. All right, guys. So the answer of whether or not you can mix sealed and ported subs and get good bass is a conditional yes. But for most people, I would say no. So the reason why I would say no for most people, if you don't have measurement capability and you don't know how to integrate a sealed and a port sub, ported sub in a multi-sub scenario, you could do some harm in terms of getting a losing bass response at the very low frequencies, and I don't recommend that. And then for other cases where you have maybe a small sealed sub and a giant ported sub, I don't recommend that kind of integration either because you don't have as much output capability generally in smaller sealed subs as you do with a larger ported sub. So unless you have a really stout sealed subwoofer that has similar output capability to the ported sub you're going to use in your system, I generally shy away from integrating them together. But for those of you that have the technical means, that have measurement capabilities, and listen to my advice in this video, yes, you can mix sealed and ported subs in the same system and get good bass. So let me illustrate what I'm talking about here. So for those that are maybe new to the channel and just want some basic definitions of what a sealed and what a ported sub is, this is just a very uh, rudimentary diagram. Here's a sealed enclosure with a subwoofer. It Obviously, there's no port. It's completely sealed off in the enclosure. And then here's a ported subwoofer that has a port for tuning to give you more bass response at the lower frequencies. So I want to go on and just show you a product example. And I'm going to use SVS in this example just because we have so much measurement data on their products. And it's just great to illustrate uh, a point here. So we have here the Ultra Series. I believe it's the Ultra 16, SB16, and PB16 Ultra. And this is the sealed version, and this is the ported version. Similar drivers, but one of them's ported, one of them's sealed. And the ported box is larger, so there's a lot more output at you know below 40 hertz or so. Um, but the sealed enclosure is, is still a very capable sub because SVS uses stout drivers really powerful amplifiers and a lot of EQ boost. So I want to show you um, what happens here when I'm talking about different roll off rates and how this can cause problems. So you can see on this PB13 Ultra, this is their, uh, their ported subwoofer and it has different tuning modes. This is the normal mode, this is the extended mode when it's in ported configuration, and then this is the sealed mode. So theoretically speaking, a, su a ported subwoofer has what's called a fourth order base alignment. So it's um, 24 dB per octave, meaning wherever it starts rolling off, it should be 24 dB down at half that frequency. So in this case, 20 hertz versus 10 hertz. And this one is an extended version, so it goes a little bit lower. And then the sealed enclosure, when you seal up all those ports and it acts like a sealed sub, generally has a 12 dB per octave roll off or second order cr uh, crossover or, or roll off rate uh, filter response. So whatever frequency it starts rolling off at at half that frequency, it should be 12 dB down. And you can see that here in these curves. And the problem is when you try to mix and match a sealed and a ported sub in the same system and it has different roll off rates and different slopes is at where the port tuning frequency is, where that bass starts going out of phase from the port, it can cause phase cancellations with the sealed subwoofer. So that's why you really have to get these um, roll-offs to kind of combine synergistically so it doesn't have destructive interference, but instead it has constructive interference. 
because the advantage of multi-sub, there's actually two advantages to multi-sub. You've got better seat to seat consistency because you're controlling standing waves in the room when you strategically paste the subs in the right locations, but also at very low frequencies, below about 30 hertz or so, you get what's called a low frequency coupling factor. And it actually acts like one giant subwoofer, even if they're not co-located, because the wavelengths are so long that you can actually get, you know, anywhere from four to six dB of gain for every doubling of subs, even if they're not in the same locations at the very low frequencies. So you really want to get those roll-offs integrated properly so you can take advantage of having more output at the ultra-low frequencies and also still have better c to c consistency. So I wanted to show you another example of another uh, SVS sub. It's the PB4000. Just to illustrate that not all sealed and not all ported subs have the theoretical roll-offs that I was talking about before. There's obviously some EQ shaping here um, for sealed mode. The roll-off is a little bit, you know, maybe a little bit less than 12 dB per octave. And at the very low frequencies, if you put enough boost on a sealed sub that's really stout, you can get some pretty incredible in-room gains. This is not an in-room measurement. This is anechoic. But in a room, you can get a lot more output below, below, way below the tuning frequency of its similar uh, ported version. So there are advantages to sealed subs in terms of ultra, ultra low output if they're very base capable, very output capable subs. So I wanted to show you an example in my own personal system back with my RBH Sound Status AT reference speakers. Um, in room at the listening position, this is the base response that I measured that with no EQ and just the two speakers. And what happens is when you only put two speakers in a room, full range that is, and they're not strategically located for best bass, you're really struggling to fight room modes, standing waves. So below 200 hertz or so, you're actually measuring what the room is doing to the bass. The room dominates what you're hearing with bass, regardless of how good your speakers are. These are $50,000 speakers. These have incredible bass, but they're still fighting the physics of the room. And you can see that there's big dips here at 50 hertz and at 30 hertz. And then the roll off here um, is pretty steep, below 20 hertz. Um, and then it kind of comes back up at very low frequencies. Well, I had a pair of sealed subwoofers, Velodyne DD15 pluses, that I integrated into this uh, system back when I had this all these speakers in the same room. As you know, the RBH speakers are ported and the Validine subwoofers are sealed. And before I was able to adjust the roll-off rate of the sealed subs, I was losing even more output here. So it was going down. So you could see that's not the case now. When I have those two Validine subs on with the RBH speakers, I'm getting benefits everywhere because I strategically located them. And I got them to couple properly at the very low frequencies. The Validine subs had a DSP interface so I could adjust the roll-off rate. And what I did in that case was I made it look like it was a ported sub. I, I put the high-pass filter at about 18 hertz or so, which was the tuning frequency of my speakers. And I bumped it from 12 dB per octave to about 18 or 24 dB per octave. I forgot exactly what setting I used. This is why you really need to do measurements. Using REW with a calibrated microphone, I went and I measured my seating locations to determine how these two subs ported and sealed acoustically coupled in the room. So even when you go with theory, theory can tell you, oh, it's not going to work. This is, you're going to have big problems. But when you put it in a room because the room dominates the bass response, some of that theory goes out the window and you really need to rely more on measurements and less on theory, which is why I can't stress enough. You need to measure the bass response in your room. If you, especially if you're going to try to attempt mixing and matching subs with different bass alignments. So here's a measurement. I did actually six measurements, the three seats in the front row and the three seats in the back row. And the fact that I did multi-sub and I had proper alignment of my sealed and my ported subs, which my RBH speakers are considered ported subs because they're full range. Look at how good the bass response is here. It's very consistent. Seat to seat consistency is within plus or minus, I think less than plus or minus 10 dB from 
12 hertz all the way out to 100 hertz across two rows of seats, six seats, and just minimal EQ. I wasn't even using a whole lot of EQ. I was just doing these measurements just to get everything to align up. And you can see this excellent alignment, especially in the back row. Both the sealed and the ported subs were just working very well together to give me a 3 dB point of around 12 or 13 hertz. Bass is epic. So I can't stress to you guys enough, um, if you're a beginner and you don't have measurement capability and you're looking at buying new subs, stick with similar bass alignments for both of your subs or whether you're using two or four subs, get all ported or get all sealed. But if you're an advanced user and you have a really good sub laying around, whether it's ported or sealed, and you're looking at adding another sub that has a different base alignment, if you have the ability to measure and you have the EQ tools, whether the EQ is built into the subwoofer, like the SVS has EQ tools, as well as the Validines, so you could adjust the high pass filter and you could adjust the phase and you could adjust delay. If you have that ability in the sub, or you buy like a mini DSP, which does all of that stuff, go ahead, go mix and match different base alignment subs. You can get great results as I just showed you. But in majority of cases of people that don't have these tools and don't have these sophisticated DSP um, built into their subs, stick with the same base alignment. So I hope that helped you guys. Why don't you thumb this video up please like it. Please subscribe to our channel if you're not already subscribed. Let us know down below what kind of subwoofers are you using? Are you doing ported subs? Are you doing sealed subs? Are you doing a mix of the two? Why are you doing that? Tell me why you're doing this with your base. I hope you found this useful. Don't forget about our Patreon at patreon.com slash audioholics. There's a lot of benefits to becoming a patron of Audioholics. You get unique content on that channel that we don't always put here. You get content first there and you get interaction with me if you want to suggest video topics or ask questions. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. And until next time, my friends, keep listening.